Hey guys, welcome to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 1991 Japanese cyberpunk horror movie 964 Pinocchio. Whatever the hell that means. Um, this movie has a Japanese title with a square root in it. I don't know why it's not in the English title, but anyways, this movie is considered one of the seminal films of Japanese cyberpunk. It's directed by Shozen Fukui, Hello, darkness, my old friend. and is often compared to Tetsuo the Iron Man, of which Fukui worked as a crew member. The film details some shit. <laughs> it has brain modified sex slaves, hallucinations. I haven't actually read far into the synopsis beyond that because, you know, when you're watching a cyberpunk horror movie, you want your first experience to be as unblemished as possible. So let's go into this thing with virgin eyes and see how corrupted they come out of it. Sometimes we do prestige films, sometimes we do nonsense out of the recesses of the human mind. Today, oh boy, okay, already, oh dear, oh no, oh no. Crazy surgery being performed. Always, always with the, the extreme wide-angle lenses on these avant-garde films. Getting off to a quick start. Can I describe to you anything that's happening right now? Not really. Okay, there's surgery going on while also some nurses are getting laid. Are you allowed to show this outdoors? The girl's buttocks is completely exposed. Hey, oh god, her teeth. Oh, never trust quick edits. I feel, I feel the same way. I really do. I'd hate to have my head shaved like that. Just have to have that look for, oh, what is he doing? They're just shooting on the actual street. Like that guy just looked at what, what they were doing. Yeah. People just watching this film going on. Ooh, that looks so cool. Where is this? This is just like a specific setup to like Japanese apartments that they have all of their HVAC systems, like exhaust systems running out the side like that. This had the Matrix color scheme down. What are the green movies can we think of? The Matrix, 964 Pinocchio. That's it. That's the whole list. Oh my god, this movie needs to slow down. Welcome to the Underground Kingdom. Welcome to the Hobo Network. What was that thing called in John Wick 2? Would I make a lot of enemies by saying I didn't really love John Wick 2 or 3? Somebody, please, get this man a gun. Somebody, I really hate please, that get move. This man a gun. Feel good. Shimmy, shimmy. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Hi, hi. Between this and uh, Water Lilies, we've had some vigorous thrusters in the past two movies. If you're looking for my commentary for this, uh, I'm sadly bereft. I like a sweater. That looks nice. I always hate shooting out in the open with like real people. Like forcing them to be a part of the performance is always just a weird look for me. There were a few sections of like a uh, funeral parade of roses that were shot, shot out in the open, but uh, it wasn't in such a way that they were trying to elicit the public in the performance. That is the coolest shot. Hey, you did it! Good for you! Has he suddenly become sentient? This episode is brought to you by Jägermeister. Hamanaste und Kaffrini Hong. This translator did a hell of a job. That's cute. I hope she doesn't get gruesomely murdered in the, within the next reel. Christopher Doyle, this ain't. Though it does have a certain amount of his kineticism and charm. Yeah, I like the soundtrack a little bit. It's grown on me. There he is, looking like the king that he is. I've come here to liberate you. 
He's like actually full on Neo right now. Don't just have sex, please. I don't know who you people are. Ah, oh, the good old days of computers. Back when desktops were desktops and women were women. <laughs> I didn't say I disagreed. <laughs> what movie was it where a person was like making fun of a girl for crying like that? <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. It was definitely Silence of the Lambs. Buffalo Bill. <laughs> what a weird movie to become so popular in the mainstream. I mean, I guess it's like very lord. Not this movie. Silence of the Lambs. I guess Silence of the Lambs is like very like lord and appealing to like the dark sensibilities. But like movie about like a, I mean, skin suit. It's a lot. I like the, uh, I don't know, like the early 90s Jet Li sound effects. If I could see anything that was happening right now, I would be horrified. Yo, she manages to change her face shape dramatically. What kind of lens did they use for this shot? So we can see how Takashi Miike came from this this culture. I can't even explain anything that's going on right now. Like nerds to me giving any sort of commentary or analysis, I guess. I'm like shocked by how like white her shirt has managed to stay after living underground for so long, but girl keeps tidy, I guess. Honestly, what the f is going on? It's just like so rude. People just trying to get on with their lives and stuff. What are you gonna do, I guess? Mimiko! This has like the color palette of uh, Fallen Angels. Christopher Doyle, you know? I know he's in Hong Kong, he's not in Japan, I know. I'm just saying. This is like such an interesting kind of like look and feel to this. This is like a mix of like the like underground sequence in Possession. Uh, and like the underground sequence in the girl with the dragon tattoo. Very strange. Very weird. Very cool. Ew. How is she producing so much? Is she actually whorfing? I watched too many whorfing movies. She is producing a lot. How though? I guess it's in her hands. No, that sounds like that came out of her. <laughs> oh, Fukui, he was definitely, uh,. Definitely watching some some Javalski before this. What can I say other than you really need to see it for yourself? Much like the the milk vomit scene in Possession, it's really an experience you have to watch in its entirety. Eek, girl, your beautiful shirt. Look what you've done to your beautiful beautiful shirt. Long live the new flesh. Yo, man, I agree with you, but, like, I wouldn't verbalize in quite this way. Oi. Oi, 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 So I guess no catering on this these days? Darude's Sandstorm. Who am I got? What do you even say about the movie that has everything? Don't like the implications of that. She's like the big show, she just turns heel again. She's got a great laugh though, I gotta say. Green super villain. Back. She's doing this out in public again. Very empty streets. What time are they shooting this? She has 
potent natural crazy face. She is like selling like a beast. We've got Dolph Ziggler over here. Don't stop. Stop e licking it. Where did that come from? Where where is that coming out of? Oh, it is coming out of her mouth. Oh. I was not under the impression that I was going to be watching an Andrzej Zawalski film. I thought I was going to be watching like a standard avant-garde sci-fi horror flick, not like a Polish avant-garde sci-fi horror flick. I like kind of get the themes of this though. We are constricted to bondage, whether physical or spiritual, and we must uh, sublimate. I will say in terms of like bonded psychic prisoner sci-fi movies, I am liking this a lot more than Beyond the Black Rainbow. For my taste at least, I'd definitely say that this movie is like going for it a bit more. <laughs> like really going for it, like going for it. Never get this close. You never want to get this close. This movie has like a fixation on tongues. A fixation. <laughs> Nobody will ever notice. <laughs> it's definitely got some humor and some 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 pacing to it. <laughs> very very anime-ish kind of pacing to it. Very 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 Leone. Very very Kurosawa-ish pacing to it. Very De Palma pacing to it. This movie, man, what the fuck? <laughs> this movie's just riddled with incompetence. Just the worst henchman you could hire. Oh, she dead. Dude, what did I get myself into? She had such a change of heart. I wonder what happened. They just went ahead and did it. Never no mind. Not a car in sight. How are they managing this? This is crazy. This is genuine psycho shit. Everybody's like, remember that day we were on the street when they were filming Square Root of 964 Pinocchio? Genuinely, how did they accomplish this? Oh, that's so good. See, that's a bit of what I don't like about uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow, is that it feels so bottled up. I know I've been complaining about this being shot in public spaces for the duration of the movie, but like, there's like this balancing act where like, if you make something like a bottle episode, or if you just put it out in the public too much, there's like no sense of stakes. If you put it in a bottle and have it on like, in like one location, I don't know, there's not enough room to breathe, There, you're not given a, a sense of like, consequence as much. And the same also happens if you put it out, out in public too much, because, like, obviously they're not going to endanger people's lives while filming out 
the public, and it gives a sense of uh, breathing room for the plot where things feel consequential. There's just a little bit of there's a little bit of risk and a little bit of openness. He's just like straight up Heath Ledger's Joker and Ichi the Killer. But also, I might say in Beyond the Black Rainbow's favor that it doesn't showcase a person running for five whole minutes. <laughs> Basically, THX. Literally, who are you, Himiko? Final duel. It's like literally an anime. Don't bother us. This movie's just full of reaction gifts. I know, I feel the same way. Well, at least he died the way he lived. With an Ahigao face. But why? It didn't have to go this way. All them cherries. He's turning into a rock man! He's got that weird disease from, from Game of Thrones. He was a mountain the whole time. Let this be a lesson on our relationship with nature. Why do you hate him so much? You guys used to be friends. I mean, I didn't, I didn't expect it to take this direction, I gotta say. <laughs> there it goes. Bye-bye. Maybe in the end, the true monster was the friends we made along the way. Oh, that's cute. That's a sweet ending. Cool, that was... Okay. Sure. That was 964 Pinocchio. It was interesting. Um, I don't know, is it about relationships, I guess? How do I put this? It was kind of like, uh, I don't even know what avant-garde means these days. It, it, it was avant-garde in the sense of like, a, a, like a, a contemporary Terrence Malick piece. Like, it's interpreted in an avant-garde way. It's in it's interpreting themes in an avant-garde way, but in terms of the structure or the plot that you're following, it's pretty easy to follow and sequential. I don't know. Maybe it's about relationships. Maybe it's about, you know, being kept apart from 
your true love and then fusing with them in the end. That seems to be what a lot of a lot of uh, Japanese media seems to be about. Anxiety is about being close to another person and then fusing with them in the end. We see that in Dragon Balls, in Akira, in, in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't really know what this movie is about, but it was a trip to watch. And it was a lot more f entertaining than some movies that are kind of uh, more precious and uh, self-important about their avant-garde status. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Oh, I don't know why I, what I... I wouldn't say I really, really enjoyed this. But I had a lot of fun with this. So yeah, that was 964 Pinocchio. So yeah, that was 964 Pinocchio. Uh, let me know if you've seen any of the Hallmark or even random avant-garde Japanese films in your time. Uh, I don't know, what are some of the well-known ones? Uh, Tetsuo, The Iron Man, I don't know, Visitor Q, I guess. <laughs> a Page of Madness. I, I'm doing a video on A Page of Madness. It's, it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, check out 964 if you want to. It's available online on YouTube. And until next time, keep watching good movies. Take care.